Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Helena Boucher, Jim Hale, and Gary Fredericks. And I want to ask the question, what are the pros and cons and risks of using humor in business? Gary, can you kick us off, please? Yeah, I'm actually known for my humor in business. It's something I do. I do it because I like to keep people loose, you know, and sometimes tension builds up. And if the boss is the one being jovial and joking around a little bit, it helps everybody else kind of relax. However, there is a, you know, a very fine point that you can walk down when you're using humor in the workplace. You gotta be careful you're not going to offend anybody or use any off color kind of humor or anything like that. So it's usually just corny jokes or, you know, just observations of things going on in the world that I talk about. But it's, I think it's, I think it's important that you do it. I'd like to take a shot at this. Uh, humor can be used as a multifaceted tool or a multi-edged sword. Mm. As a manager, you can be self-depreciating to help out an employee, to boost their employee's confidence. Sarcasm or humor can be used to showcase an example, to make it larger so people can clarify what's going on. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you got to be careful with humor, too, because, I mean, what is humor, really? And, you know, my husband and I go back and forth because he's a little bit on the sarcastic side. And, and I've had to say, like, why is that funny? So there are those conversations. But I think it's the, it's the safest to poke fun at yourself, right? Because then, then you're in a safe space and, and no one can feel like they're picking on you. Mm. What about the international aspect of it where, uh, you know, everybody might in the, that's in the room might speak English, but they may not understand the humor. And does that leave someone out? Is there risk to that? There's definitely the risk, particularly in my area as a negotiator. Mm. So uh, one thing you try to do is find out who you're negotiating with, try to find out as much information as you can, but different countries have different styles. Mm -hmm. And, and many times humor is very inappropriate unless you truly, truly know mm. that person and your friends. Oh, interesting. So Gary, you use a lot of humor in an international kind of setting. What would that mean for you? Usually self-deprecation kind of humor. I work to companies where I've traveled all over the world. Some of the companies we actually had to take culture classes before we left, you know, to make sure we were... Mm keeping, keeping ourselves on, you know, on the right side of things, uh, even traveling to Canada and the UK, you know, English has so many different meanings, you know, one word can mean a lot of different things. You have to be very careful. Helena, I'd love for you to weigh in on humor in writing in the business setting. Yeah. Again, it's super personal. And I think the thing is, is that you have to understand who your audience is because one of the things I did, many things I've done is get Myers-Briggs certified. And depending on like what your type is, you know, you're either going to be super literal minded or you're going to be, you're going to have a more abstract sense of what is funny. Hmm. And so if you're speaking to a bunch of engineers you know, that's going to be one type of humor. And if you're going to be speaking to a bunch of artists, it, you, you can sort of bounce around more. It doesn't have the, the connections don't have to be so literal because they're making them mm. way more than you are. Mm. So I think it's really important to know your audience and, and use it sparingly and strategically and almost surgically. And also if you can point, if you can poke fun at yourself, um, that's, that's always the safest. It sounds like we're definitely saying that poking fun of yourself is the best idea. What about on LinkedIn posts? I don't generally use humor on LinkedIn posts. I think about it. And then I say, nah, I don't think I should say that. But because, you know, in writing, it's harder. It's harder because even if you're being serious, sometimes what you're saying is not being perceived the way you mean it. Mm -hmm. So I might look at a cartoon or something like that if, if it's if it's something poignant mm. i might post it or something but i, I 
I don't, I write my own material a lot. So I don't, I don't want to write anything that I'm going to post on LinkedIn. That's supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. the, the The audience on LinkedIn is so broad. It's difficult. However, if you can use a topic that's generic that touches the audience, say Gary's guitar that mm -hmm. I see in his background, uh, and use some humor around that, then you touch everybody because music is universal. Sometimes I will have my guitar in the background and use that as a focal point to go off on a topic. Mm. All right. So let's say you, you said a joke, fell flat, then what? Well, probably face to face, you'd have more indication of, of how it came across. Um, <laughs> you know, and he's like, oh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think it depends on the person and, and if how, if what their reaction is. I mean, sometimes it's just better to just move right along and change the subject, you know, because anything you pay attention to or give, give energy to is going to get bigger. So, um, but if you've really offended somebody, you know, you, you can know, and you can apologize on the, you know, on, on the fly and just make a note of not to do that anymore. <laughs> I've done a rim shot and then said, well, that didn't work too well. I apologize. <laughs> right. Let's try to keep it light. They understand I'm trying to keep it light. So mm -hmm. I think it depends that. on whether you actually offended mm -hmm. or you were just bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. if you're just bad, you could just say, well, that was not good. Never mind and move on. But if you offended someone, I feel like you really, in the moment, you need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the hardest things when you try to say something funny. So I have an example. When I was working in corporate, I was on a conference call and someone was speaking far from the conference microphone and I couldn't hear them. And I jokingly said, hey, are you speaking English? Meaning, hey, I can't understand you. And when they got close enough to the microphone that I could hear them, they had a super, super thick accent. Oh, no. And no. I was mortified. But at the moment, I was like, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Sometimes you just got to take those and, and eat them. <laughs> you know? I'll behave yourself sometimes, you know? I, mean, you know yeah. I like joking. I like making fun of myself. Uh, I can't make fun of other people because they don't understand, you know, that it's coming from a place where I make fun of everything. So, so I just yeah. shut up sometimes. <laughs> and, and I don't, in that situation, I don't even know if I went back to the guy later and apologized. I know someone else on the call said to, to him, oh, she can't understand you. Can you get closer to the mic and kind of tried to smooth it over? Cause they were all in the room and I was the only one that was distant, but it was, so awkward and I felt really bad so that was a terrible use of humor I shouldn't have done that but I didn't know I didn't know so I think in, in those situations when you do put your foot in your mouth your best option is apologize explain or maybe ignore and those aren't great options best no. option all three are horrible so no no I, I grew up in an Italian family and a lot of my relatives spoke Italian and so when I would be speaking English, things would not go over the way I expected. Mm. But they were relatives, you know, so it it wasn't a bad thing. But I learned a lot from that, you know. I I, I kind of know what I can say and not say. I remember the first time I was in London. I was in a restaurant, my friend and I, and we uh, were finished eating, and we asked for the check, and the waiter had no idea what we were talking about. This mm. was back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. And he finally, we figured it out. And we said, so I said, can I get the bill, please? Oh, I thought you were asking me to write a check. I was kind of confused as to why you were doing it. <laughs> the, the little thing like that, you know, mm -hmm. it took us a half an hour to get, get, get the bill and pay. You know? Oh, no. But you got to be careful. Things like that happen. Yeah. English is not English is not English. Even in, in the United States, we all speak such different dialects. Oh, things can mean different things. So that is our 10 minutes. I'm going to cut us off there. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me about humor. And I appreciate it. And we'll do it again really soon. Thank you. Thank you.